and welcome to another episode of Ball Gowns and Boots here at Burwood Estate. Um, we're once again in the gorgeous kitchen of Burwood Luxury Suites and I'm joined by Catherine and Carl. Um, so you are from the Highlands, lived here all your life? Uh, on and off, so I'm a Sydney boy but... Sydney yeah. boy, okay. Yeah, living in the Highlands again which is fantastic. Yeah, the cooler climate. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm um, Mitigo Friary, Barrel High. Um, yeah, I've lived in the Highlands in Mitigo all my life. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so today you're going to be cooking. Yeah, I've been trying to chef, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. amazing. Um, and we are trying some Chardonnay, um, which is delicious. Um, so very excited to try that with the salmon. If you yeah. could tell us a bit about what you're cooking All today. Alright, so we're going to knock up some uh, mashed potato and we're going to do a uh, Atlantic salmon with some uh, lemon and a little bit of white wine and some fresh dill. So we'll oven bake that in the oven and uh, we'll go from there. Sounds glorious. So, um, I'm going to leave this in your hands but let me know if you need, okay. <laughs> you need to give us any duties or anything like that. Um, so where would we start? Okay, um, spuds straight up, so usually you'd start them from coal and bring them up to ball with some salty water, but we're in a hurry today, so we're going to knock these into half a little bit. So we've got a pot happening over here. Get the kettle cracking, take a bit of time. Potatoes. Can you tell me a little bit about why you would bring the potatoes up to boil from cold? Okay, so most, pretty much all root vegetables should start from cold water and bring it to the boil. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just seems to cook the potatoes or, or root vegetable better than putting them straight into boiling water. It takes a little bit longer, but if you bring them up to temperature from cold water, they seem to cook better. So that's just a chefy thing. Top tip. And, and, and always salt your water a little bit because then you're adding less salt. When, when, when you're mashing and things like that, so you're always cooking a little bit of, even when you're blanching things, a little bit of salty water, blanch it, take them out, or, or cool them in cool water or ice, so you have root vegetables, bring them up from cold, Amazing. it ends up, it ends up better, yeah. Well, I think I'm going to learn a lot by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, content. we'll get back into it, so I'll just knock these into fours because they'll cook a little bit quicker. And how long would you be cooking these for? Look, anywhere, probably about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how big you chop them. Okay. okay. Alright, um, we're going to get these spuds on the stove, and get okay. them rolling away, and then um, we'll get our salmon prepped for the oven. But, um, okay, so... And then, do you need to do anything? No, I'm, 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 I'm in control. <laughs> Confident cook. So here we go. So, Get this thing fired up. So we're speeding things up today, so we're just using the boiling water, but usually come up from the cold water and, and, and salt salt your water. Bring them up to the boil, put the lid on. The, 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 the lid will help them to get to the boil quicker. But right, that's done. Let them ticker away, and we'll get our salmon ready. So Atlantic salmon, lemon and dill. Um, if it's got no skin on it and a smaller piece, it's going to take not very long to cook. So. 180 or 350, probably that size, I'm saying about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 at the most, and then it will keep cooking when you pull it out of the oven. So if, if you're doing a bigger volume, with the skin on and a bit thick, you just have to keep checking it. So maybe 20 minutes or so, but just don't overdo it. So we'll crack into it. I absolutely love salmon. Yeah. I must admit though, I find it very hard to cook dry. Because like you say, depending on the width of the salmon, yeah. it's different cooking times and things like that. It is, and your oven too will vary. Will, will vary. It makes a huge difference. So yeah, so just be, just, you know, treat it, treat it, treat it kindly salmon. It, it, it's a nice, it's mm. nice. So, and it's nice pan fried as well. I like pan fried salmon. Yep, yeah, do skin, skin slides skin. down, yeah. yeah get delicious. a bit of a crisp on it. Mm. Flip it over, a little bit of butter in at the end with some olive yeah. oil. Love butter, butter yeah. always speaks to my heart. <laughs> um, so tell me a bit about you two and what you get up to, what you do, any hobbies or interests. Oh, well, Carl's um, a concrete art. He's um, pretty amazing actually. I found some um, Instagram fireplaces that I just adore. <laughs> and I'm like, bang, bang, <laughs> how about this? And yeah, yeah, he, he made it so we've got some pretty impressive um, um, concrete furniture oh, type amazing. arrangements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really creative. Yeah, cool. yeah. He's quite a little artist in there. Um, if you can imagine it, 
he can essentially build it. Oh, and the chef. And the chef. <laughs> and and apparently does the washing up and the cooking. I know. <laughs> he cooks and he cleans and shops. So, Unreal. <laughs> yeah, we'll save a little bit of that dill just for going to the end. So just finally chop this up a little bit. The dill smells lovely and fresh. A little it? bit of dill, yeah. a couple of nice bits of salmon. These are the middles, so you get the tails. I like the middles for some reason. And the, 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 if you get the tails, they'll be a bit thinner, so they'll cook quicker. So the middles, the middles is what you want, and, and skin on's good too. I like the skin; it tastes mm. good. So a little bit of salt, two by sides of them, bit of pepper. And does dill go with anything else? I can't ever find anything to put with other than salmon. Look, I do a good just a tuna pasta, oh, which okay. is nice. Capers, chili, oh, fr fr fresh dill, pickles, things like that. Do some pasta, bit of you know tin tomatoes. That sounds delicious. Are you eat, free eat. next week. <laughs> <laughs> Come round again. Show us another dish. <laughs> sounds great. So just pepper and salt. Then lay them on this here like this. And sometimes with your salmon, you might get a little bone here or there. I mean, just, you know, it's with any fish, you're going to get a bone here and there. But if you do see them, you can pull them out. You can sort of feel them. But usually get that on the other sides. So there's our, our salmon. And I'm just going to just give this a little splash of white too, just to help it steam. So a little bit of that like that. So a little bit of foil. About that. So I reckon 10 minutes this fish should be cooked. Okay. It's because they're not very thick. How can you tell when it's cooked? Well, you, the fish is easy to see cooked in the skin or you pan fry it because you can see it. You can Probably. see you can see it cooked, it's not like a steak. But the more you cook, you know. It's just yeah, you just don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. So just some dill, some lemon, pepper and salt, cover it with foil, check it after about eight minutes, pull it out. So we'll cover that. That's ready to go in the oven. Amazing, very simple, but it sounds delicious. Yeah, the flavors, the colors and flavors yeah. are great, don't they? Lovely colors. It's always nice to have a lot of color in your food rather yeah. than lots of beige or something like that. It just makes it look much more appealing and usually a lot of for you as well. So a little bit of dill for garnish later because it's going to taste nice and look good. We'll just check on these spuds. Yeah, I think they're going to take another sort of 10 minutes. So. All right, we'll just check them. So, knife, they should, they should go into the spud quite easily, so they're a little bit hard. So they're going to take another five or six minutes, but all like, depending on the size of your spuds, just, they should take about 20 minutes. So. We'll just let that tickle away. Now salmon's ready to go in the oven, so that salmon won't take long to cook, so when my spuds are nearly ready, I'll jam that uh, salmon in the oven and good to go. With the wine in the bottom of the baking tray, you don't have to use wine. You could use water, you could use the fish stock, you could use the chicken stock. It's optional. What's the so, advantages of using wine? I think, I think it just helps to steam the fish as well and gives also give it some flavour. So, and you've got the lemons and the dill and the pepper and salt, so it's, it's basic, but you don't have to use a wine. You know, you want a nice white dry wine, I think, just just a little bit. Do you prefer to use wine? It's up to you. A stock or, 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 or anything like that would be fine, just a little bit. It's, it's optional, it's up to you, but the lemons will do their job as well. There's salmon in the oven, in the baking tray. So, we'll pop them in. I reckon about eight minutes, we'll check it. Because they're only quite thin. So, here we go. Oh, we've lost the thing. We'll see how we go with that. So, you seem like you enjoy cooking and know your stuff. I've definitely learned a lot already. <laughs> and how did you get into cooking? Um, I think just from growing up from my mother. She's, she's a good cook. Mm. Um, three kids. At, at a very young age, all 18 months apart, so mum always had good fresh fruit and veg and grew up in a few acres out of Arcadia in Sydney. And dad's a really good cook as well. Oh, nice. So uh, I, I think it just comes just uh, just cooking as a child and things yeah. like that, and it just progressed. But I just, yeah, I just like to cook it. It's a, it's a nice thing to do and always tastes good. You know where your food's come from, but just sort of self-taught, to be honest. 
um, just take note of like I like cooking shows. And Who really likes cooking shows? Master, oh, no, master <laughs> Chef <laughs> when it first came out. Yeah. That's all a bit fancy now. But I don't think I'm a good cook. Like I'm, I'm just a home cook and I just I just do things that I think taste good and yeah. I, I love my soups and Don't things see. like that and yeah. a good Aussie barbecue and whatnot. But um, yeah, I think everything's trial and error. Yeah, so definitely. Just, you you have to just get stuck in and go for it. Hundred percent. Just have a crack. I think everyone should should cook a little bit more at home, and especially with the, the way the world is at the moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, have a little veggie patch, just grow some herbs. Yeah, fresh parsley for your eggs and things like that. So, yeah, it makes it. a world of difference. Garnishing and all of that yeah. makes a huge difference. And you don't know until you try. That's I, mean, right. I grew up on a farm as well. Um, so cooking was always very important in my family home. And mum is a glorious cook. So yeah. I think if you grow up with it, you then you kind of look for that when you're cooking yourself. Yeah. Um, what's your favourite dish? Oh, I, 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 to be honest, I really don't have one. Um, I mean, probably, I, I, look, my favourite meal would be a soup. Mm -hmm. So, a chicken soup in the pressure cooker, yeah. a, a peen ham soup. Um, I, I love soups, I love winter, I like that time of year. Okay. Um, I like parts of dishes. Because I've got a very physical job mm -hmm. and I'd usually skip breakfast, so I take a packed desk every day. So <laughs> Intermittent take, fasting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, I've got to have my morning coffee, but um, mm. no, I mean, you know, it depends on what time of the year. Like I love spring, you know, mm. fresh fruit and veg is good, and just things like that. And, you know, just like to grow your own veggies like beans and kale. Like we grew some beautiful kale this year, so oh, smoothies right. and kale with yeah. poached eggs. and mm -hmm. Very yeah. healthy yeah. and sounds so, delicious. Yeah. 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 So wholesome. It is. Really nice. It's rewarding as well. It and is. Your favourite dish? Um, I do like his pies. Yeah, I'm partial to a pie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pies are really good. Yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, mushroom, the mushroom and beef pie. Mm. It's delicious with mash. I love mash with pie. Do you make it um, pastry or? No, nah, pastry is a really hard one. You I can, with the pastry. pastry it's that good. You just buy yeah. it. You just buy it. You can get it from anywhere. He yeah. makes his own mint sauce for peas. Oh, from mint from garden. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's really good, babe. Like vinegar, sugar, mint. It's Sometimes easy. it's surprising how easy things are. Yeah. You just kind of need to get into the groove and not be too scared. I find cooking by myself when other people are here is the best way to kind of learn and then yep. you feel Practice. comfortable cooking for other people. Yeah, because it's a bit great. daunting cooking for people sometimes. So. Well, <laughs> well, it didn't um, occur to me to make my own mint sauce. But no. just, I, I would be like, no, but that comes from the shops. Everything's so easy these days. It's really easy. Everything you can just ground mm. and go. But it's nice when someone actually puts in the effort and makes it. And when you have it growing in the garden, you have to use mm -hmm. it. I mean, there's actually mint out in the garden here. Um, Benji was showing me a little walk around the yards and yeah, there's some lovely mint. And the smells and everything that comes from the herbs is just gorgeous. Yeah. Mint and parsley. You see, you use a lot of parsley mm. out of the garden as well. Basil and spence. Yeah, right. basil. Uh, I didn't put a timer on that, but I was sort of pretty good with time, so I reckon. I have faith. I reckon we're going to leave in about three minutes. But, <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. But um, look, while we're waiting for that to go, I might just crack on with these potatoes because mm -hmm. they can just sit there. Nice and soft. Knife goes in nice and easily, which is good. That's what we want. Take the, turn the heat off. Rip these over here and give them a strain. No, I'm very spoiled. <laughs> I'm very lucky. So, yeah, so good. So back over on the heat here. Just take, mash them on the heat. I do. Just takes a little bit of moisture out of the bottom of the pan. So I like to just give them a quick go. Get that through there a little bit. We're going to grab a little bit of cream. So dash of cream because cream's good. Butter's good. All of my favourite things, cream, butter, salt. Good pinch, salt. Good oh. pinch of salt. Yeah. Because, you know, you've got to season your food, otherwise it's horrible. <laughs> so, True. And, and taste things too, guys, when you cook. Because, you know, you don't want to serve it up and it, you know, it just needs a little bit of salt. So, cook into it. Got a little bit of fresh parsley, some whatever herb you wanted to put through it, you can if you like. Cheese sauce, 
So I give him a really good old mash. You can you can use a potato like a sieve. You can I just do it like this. So I give him a really good mash. I think it's going to be good. Lovely. Spuds are done. I just might put that lid on there. You put a tea towel over it just to keep the heat for a minute. Um, all right, we're going to check this salmon. It's been like about eight minutes. So we'll just pull this out and have a little eat. It's not my oven, so I'm getting used to it. It's always different in someone else's kitchen. So we'll just pop this off. No, that's got heat to go. So not even close. So depending on your oven, you just cover that up. Again, we might turn this oven up a bit. Alright, so this oven's leaking a little bit, but anyway, so we've just upped it a bit. So we've just put it up to just to 200. So I reckon another four minutes or five minutes or so. But like I said, depending on your oven, it should only, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20, depending on the thickness, yeah. And would you say to check the salmon regularly? No, well, just check it after about eight minutes or so, okay. ten minutes, and then if it needs more, but yeah, because when you pull it out, it's going to keep cooking a little bit too. So. And you can tell by the colour. You you can tell that you, you with this you have some little beads of white fat come out of it, so you know that it's cooked. Mm. You don't know how to do it because it's just horrible and dry. But it's got the lemon and a little bit of wine and stuff. The other thing I didn't really do before, I should have put a little bit of olive oil, but anyway. We can just a little bit of sure to serve, be. but it, it should be fine. Yeah. Amazing. And Catherine said that you guys eat salmon a fair bit. We do. Yeah. So I like Chinese veg. So I just do uh, Atlantic salmon with the skin on. Mm -hmm. Get it to a good, you know, like a, a high heat. Bit of olive oil, skin side down, season it well. Oh, so get, you're getting the crispy skin. Yeah, get the crispy skin. Yeah. And then you'll see, you can see when it's cooking, flip it with a little bit of butter mm -hmm. up when you flip it and then just turn it off after about three minutes and just leave it in the pan to keep cooking because it'll just keep cooking for four or five minutes and then do some Chinese veg which is easy, just quarter them up. Bit of garlic, bit of ginger, a bit oh, of chilli. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, but don't overdo your Chinese veg, it only takes a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. And then dress it with some sesame oil. Don't put the sesame oil in the pan, just dress it. So you put it on once you serve your I sesame. I need to start taking some notes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be doing this tomorrow. It sounds yeah, yeah. delicious. All right, girls, we're going to check this out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fingers crossed it should be cooked right now. What are you Amazing. looking for when you check it? Well, that should just, uh, it just, uh, that should be cooked. It should, uh, I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> so we leave that to you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's just have a look and see how we're going. So I reckon, I reckon we're cooked. I reckon we're done. Why? Well, it's just so you can see the fat's come out of it. It's quite hot. This is right on the bench. Oh, that looks lovely. Amazing. Yeah, it's definitely cooked. It's probably a bit over, but anyway, it is what it is. Oh, it's lovely the way the dough has come out. I yeah. can see what you mean. Um, it looks gorgeous. A better job than what I probably would have done. So. It looks glazed. It looks like it's almost glazed. Right. Yeah. We'll grab this it's on a plate. The spessor's fingers. <laughs> Maybe a little wedge of lemon. All right, salmon's ready. Probably a little bit over, but look. So, a little bit of mashed potato, I reckon. We won't do too fancy, we're just... Rustic. Ru ru rustic, rustic, you know, so some mash, you could put some parsley through this, you could have put some really red, some red onion really finely sliced, whatever you really want. I could put the mash, it on top of the mash maybe. Should we do that? I'll just, here you go. Cut the slices of lemon. I'm not real good at plating up, I just think I'm here to eat. So. I think you're doing a grand <laughs> job, it looks really good. <laughs> Alright, so there's that. We could have just put a little bit of dribble of olive oil and we could have done this when I did my fish but... Even the drizzle was really good, I normally kind Trying of... to drizzle out of this one. <laughs> right up. Maybe a little bit of pepper on the top. Pinch of 
sold. Alright, that's it. Voila. Bon appetit. Does that look alright? Thank right? you. It looks oh. amazing, can't wait. Okay, so we have some glorious salmon um, that Carl has just cooked us. And we're going to be tasting this with some of the Chardonnay. Um, hopefully it's delicious, I have <laughs> high hopes. <Yeah. laughs> um, you definitely knew, looked like you knew what you were doing. And Teddy, if you can tell us a bit about the wine, because we're going to try it with the wine. Yeah, sure. So, I'm happy to be here to present your first vintage of the Chardonnay Verhood Wine Estate 2019. So we are located in the Sultan Heightland. It's a very, very cool climate. So it's nice to be a nice Chardonnay and to have an aromatic wine. So we are going to take the wine firstly, and after we are going to take the wine with the salmon, mushroom potatoes for the wine pairing. And would you say to smell it or? Yeah. It feels pretty good. Fruity. Mm. Any great smell. So what do you smell? Citrusy? Is that yeah, hot? it's very fresh lime citrus. Mm. And we mm. have the stone fruits like a peach. But it's not, not too harsh. Like yeah. It smells quite soft. But yeah, mm. not too hard. It's very intensity, intensive and impressive aromas, like a pr primary aromatic aroma. And now we taste? Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice and fresh. Yeah, the wine is very fresh because we are in a very cold climate. Um, after the palate, we have the um, rawness of, on the palate and more rich. But we keep uh, freshness and well balanced wine between acidity and alcohol. And I like it because we have a fresh lime citrus all on the on the palate and very nice aromas. Yeah, mm. delicious. Yeah. Really nice. So but, so now we are going to taste with the salmon. Amazing. <laughs> very much looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, it's exciting. Really it looks really good yeah. with all of the dill. Yeah. Um, it, it did a good job. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> we'll just dig so, in. Yeah. yeah, ladies, go. We'll I'm gonna talk, ladies. You go. I'll, I'll let you go for this one. And we combine them. Yum. Oh, I have a crack. Mm -hmm. It's not too bad. No, that's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You can taste the lemon, but it's yeah, you can taste all. the wine in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're filling the lime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the olive oil on on top is really nice, actually, as well. You can taste the chardonnay. That it's, it's just helped. Poached in. Poached, yeah, mm -hmm. it's nice, quite nice. That's another, really I'll good. I'll have another stab. <laughs> I yeah. know. I'm go back I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> It's very interesting the wine pairing mm. because we we find on the plate, on the wine, the same aroma is the fresh lime, citrus, mm -hmm. and the freshness of the wine balance with the richness of the salmon and delicate shomot potatoes. So it's very interesting. And the dill, yeah, yeah, and the yep. dill, yep. 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 yep, delicious combination. The mashed potato is really nice. It's so buttery, <laughs> yeah. like really buttery. So delicate. <laughs> and with the cream as well. Mm. It just makes it it's gorgeous. Yes, Today's it a beautiful day here in the Southern Highlands at um, Verwood Estate, and um, um, your, your hospitality has been really, really nice. And um, we've had a great, great, great morning out here. And um, thanks to the girls and everybody else, um, they've got they make a really, really nice wine. Everyone, so uh, stay posted, and um, if you get a chance, um, get in touch with these guys, and they'll I'll soon sort you out. It's, uh, it's a beautiful place out here, and. I'm sure you'll enjoy it, so thanks very much everyone.